Hey harmonizers, welcome to this video. We are gonna feed my pone pones and I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit about the Kreza way that we're doing it to help increase movement with our horses because we know that movement is so good for them physically and mentally. We know that horses only sleep like three, four hours a night. So the rest of the time they're meant to be kind of moving. And so I'm gonna show you guys how we're feeding our horses now that the weather is better and we can actually drive our tractor down the hill how we're feeding our horses to encourage movement and to just be healthier for our horses, both mentally and physically. We're gonna start this off by coming into my hay area. So this is the back of our indoor arena where we store our hay. Going into winter time, this is like full wall to wall and this is 80 feet wide. And each section between the beams is 25 feet wide. So that gives you an idea of just how much hay we have at our farm. And we have a mix of square bales and round bales. And there's always a pros and cons to both types of feeding. And what we're watching here is my husband playing around getting a hay bale. It's a little bit harder for him to nab that square bale right now because he has the forks on the uh, tractor instead of the spikes and normally you use spikes to pick up bales but because we use the forks to show you guys um how we do the feeding with these square bales he was too lazy and didn't want to swap them out for the spikes so he is trying to use the forks and it's tricky because you can't stab them into the bale and when he goes underneath like that he's catching the strings of the bale underneath so while he's mucking around trying to figure out how to get that hay bale up I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about the pros and cons to round bales versus squares. So first up, round bales are easier to feed. You simply just plop them into a feeder and it lasts them a couple days depending on the horse, how many horses you have in the field. Usually one round bale per horse per month. So they're easier to feed. Square bales, they are also a little bit cheaper to purchase compared to the square bales. So those are mostly the perks to a round bale. Square bales are better because you can pull them apart into pieces more easily because they are folded. So they come off in what are called flakes. Whereas a round bale is a lot harder to peel hay off of if you want to um, ration the horses a little bit more. So with round bales, the horses are usually eating tons and tons of food and it's very hard to limit them. Even if you put a net over the bale, it's still pretty hard. Whereas the squares, it's easier to do that because you can pull off the flakes. And also the bales breathe better, so they don't tend to be as dusty. It's harder for them to get mold. The smaller bales are even better, but the big squares are more breathable than the round bales. So the squares tend to cost more money, but they are tend to be healthier or better for the horses. One of the biggest cons to round bales is that the horse can shove their face right into it and then they're breathing in a lot of that dust and all those small flowers and stuff. So with the square bales, they don't tend to do that as much, especially if you pull off of the flakes. It is always better for the horses to eat their food off of the ground is usually better for them. So you might be wondering, why do we have both round bales and square bales if there's a differences? Well, in the winter time, we can't drive down this big hill like we are right now. So we do round bales up at the top end of the farm. And then that helps with um, just the ease of being able to feed. And then in the summertime or in the springtime, as much as we can, we like to do what we're doing here where we use the square bales and we're pulling off the flakes so that way we can make kind of a track system. So you can see my horses have these kind of chutes that go down. Uh, this is a different field on the other side here. The horses are coming down, getting ready to eat. And we're putting piles of hay around their area. So my husband drives through and then you can see the horses are all waiting. And you can see along the dirt tracks, there are kind of spots where there was hay put out the day before so you can see they eat most of it but then there there's always going to be kind of the longer stem stuff that they don't want and then as he drives along with the big giant bale I'm pulling flakes off and so this is a really nice easy way to do it because the the bale is huge it's like 800 pounds so it's not something that you can just push in a wheelbarrow our horses are eating I think it's about 25 to 30 pounds of hay a day each 
and there were 30 horses on our farm. We've been reducing numbers, uh, but either way, when you do the math on that, that is a lot of hay that they are eating in a given day. And so we put it like this because then it's easier to put the piles out really far apart. So when they are on the round bales, they're on feeders. And we do that a good chunk of the year. Like it's very easy just to make sure the horses have hay. But then when we can, this is a nice way to do it. And you can see those hay patches ahead. I try to put the hay roughly in the same spots that I did the day before. And then that way the waste is kind of contained. And so you can kind of see, and um, that's my husband driving there and me with Evelyn <laughs> pulling off the flakes. And uh, you can see I'm trying to drop the flakes in the same kind of patches where they were before. It's a little trickier when it gets down to the end of the bale to pull it all off. So one of the really good things about doing hay this particular way is that the horses are eating off of the ground and so their heads are down. This is how horses were meant to eat. It's better for their respiratory system. It's easier on their esophagus and kind of how everything was intended to go rather than having their heads up. And what it looks like afterwards is you can see the horses, they're spread out on these piles, eating their hay, and you can see there's long distances. And as we're pulling the hay chunks off, they're eating the flowery bits of the hay. And I'll show you that again in a little bit where these bales have alfalfa. They're like a grass mix hay. So there's some alfalfa and there's some grass and there's prime parts to the hay flake just like uh, with some food we eat you might enjoy part of your dinner or your meal more than others the same thing with the horses and so they tend to go from pile to pile eating the best parts of the hay or the most tasty parts of the hay first and then they usually go back to the other piles and eat the rest and if I put out the right amount of hay, there won't be too much waste left over. If I put out too much, then they're going to leave behind the parts of the hay that they would rather not eat. But otherwise, they eat most of it. You can see on the ground, there's some, you know, little bits of hay that they didn't eat from the day before. So we're doing this uh, every day so far because I'm home for coronavirus canceling everything. So we're both able to come and do this. You really do need two people to do it. Uh, so it works out well that I'm home and I've got my hubby driving the tractor and I'm doing the other part. And then on the other times, then we'll do round bales because it's easier, they last longer, uh, but it's nice to do a mix of both. So you might be wondering what's with this setup. You can see my horses around and then you can see these kind of rectangle shapes fenced off in the middle and you only see horses on the perimeter or what we call the track. So this is one of the gates that leads into one of the grass sections. And so that area is completely fenced off. The horses can't go in there. Same with the rectangle down at the bottom there. And the horses have some on the other side as well. And that's because if we let them roam on that area all year in the winter time, them tromping on it, or especially right now when everything's wet and kind of fragile, then what would happen, and there's another entrance into the grass area there, they wouldn't have any grass. It would just be tromped down. It would look like the rest of the farm, which is just a whole bunch of dirt area. That's dreamy poo there. And so instead, we give them these track areas that are, you know, thin like this. And then on the other side of the black fence, there is the grass area that they can't go in. So this is going down one of the shoot areas or what we call the track that goes around and it's just one giant loop so that way the horses can't get confused and they don't get lost but then it lets us spread the hay out so the horses are moving around more and it encourages more movement this is just another angle looking going up the hill and you can see it kind of goes around the corner and so the hay being spread out the horses move from pile to pile they have a much longer distance that they can travel going all the way up the hill and all the way up to the front of the arena where their water is in their shelter and so we've got two different fields that have this kind of system where they have a track that goes all the way down to the back of the property and the grass area sectioned off there's Clyde before he left for his new home he was hanging out being a naked man uh, moving around from the different piles so now he's at his new home which makes me really really sad because I miss him and I really loved him a lot but anyways back to the pony feeding so the the track system 
lets us preserve the grass that's inside that area that's rectangled off. And another thing about grass is it's, um, it's full of sugar when it's really short. And so this helps us make sure that the grass can grow up long enough that it's not full of sugar, not going to be damaging to the horses. Here's a little secret investigating my husband to see if he's got any goodies or any cookies hiding in his pockets. Uh, she's turning two this year, but she's still pretty tiny. And uh, here's another look at the track going down with the horses over there. And then this is the grass area that I'm talking about on the inside here that's completely fenced off. And they've got a couple of those sections. And then that lets us rotate them come the summertime so the horses have more uh, grass that they can eat because we preserve it. <laughs> here's my husband playing with little Evelyn as I'm filming along and you can see like this is a pretty wide section of the track that they can go around and it is just a loop that they can move around and you can see how far apart the flakes are spread out from the hay bale so the horses have the ability to move from flake to flake and move around and so we're doing this once a day because we're putting out so much hay in a given time and you can see uh, the horses have a pretty good chunk in their little pile that they can eat when they go around. That's another sectioned off grass section, but you can, can't really see the electric braid there. And this is a little pile of hay where you can see they've dug through the middle and eaten the flower parts. And then they leave the rest of it and they'll come back to it and eat the other parts later because they always prefer to eat the really sweet stuff, the really good tasting stuff first before they move on. So that's a little look at our track system and how we're doing hay in the warmer times. We can get down the hill with the tractor and and spread it out let the horses eat off the ground let the horses move around more and anyways i'd love to hear what you guys think and if you know of any other farms that are doing this kind of thing thanks for watching guys